We were just checking to make sure you were paying attention. But right now, what we really want you to do is just to sit back in your seats. Find a position that feels comfortable for just a few moments. And as you sit there, try to bring the greatest feelings that you have of gratitude. Bring those up and really feel them. Be grateful for all the multitude of blessings in our life. Try to remember how wonderful it feels to love another person and hold that feeling in your heart. Remember, remember all of the beautiful, beautiful memories that you have in your life, all the blessings you've been given. And as you remember all these wonderful things, Bring up and bring close to you that spirit that lives within us that makes every day possible, that makes every joy a reality. Hold those things, feel them. Allow yourself to be surrounded with the spirit of your own internal Christ. Feel the presence of that Christ in this room. Know that we are always in the light unless we choose not to be. Feel that blessing. Recognize what it looks like, what it feels like. Hold it close in our hearts. Just sit with that intense feeling of love and gratitude, of wonder and splendor. Just hold that in silence for just a moment. As we sit here in this sacred space next to one another, receiving the energy of each other and blessing each other with our energy. Know that you are blessed. Remember how much we are blessed. Feel your blessings. Don't let them just be passing moments. Hang on to them. Hold them. Recognize them. Feel them. And know that you are never away from your source. God is always with us. And we are forever blessed. Namaste. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> you thought once was going to be enough, but here I am again. Like a bad penny, it always returns. Okay, I know that most of you are familiar with who Eric Butterworth is. He is a renowned unity minister, or was a renowned unity minister. And he was also the author of 16 best-selling books. And he has been quoted an infinite number of times. But one of the things, and one of the quotes he's the most famous for is my favorite. And it says, God is in you as the ocean is in the wave. What does that mean? Somebody want to share with us what that means? 
Paula, I knew I could count on <laughs> It means that we are all one. Okay, we are we are God. God, Father, we're all connected like the ocean and the, the waves and the ripple. Okay, God, the ocean, and we're all connected. We're all one. What it means. Yeah, what, let me just expand on that a little if I can. Everything that is in the ocean is in the wave. And everything that is in God is in you, in all of us. There is no exception to that. And I guess I better hang on to this clicker if I'm going to keep up with myself. <laughs> Throughout the Bible, it tells us over and over again, if you want to know where God is, look inside yourself, because that's where God lives. In 1 Corinthians 3.16, do you not know that you are a temple of God? And the Spirit of God dwells in you. Luke 17, 21, neither shall they say, lo, here or there, for lo, the kingdom of God is within you. <coughs> 1 John 4, 13, and God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. So that's really what that comparison is, that the ocean Everything that's in the ocean is in the wave, and everything that's in God is in us because the Spirit of God is living in us. That is our source, as the ocean is the source for the wave. Now, I have to put this microphone down for a minute because I forgot to put this up here sooner. <laughs> and I have a big mouth, so you'll hear me. It's heavy. <laughs> Now you might say, what is that? Well, my husband back there, Rich, was brave enough to get into the icy cold water of the ocean out here yesterday to capture a wave for me. He took a bucket and he scooped up a wave and then we poured it into here. So you can all give him a little appreciation for the show and tell <laughs> love to sit and watch the waves coming in off the ocean. You can feel their power, their beauty, they're just magnificent. Does this wave look like that to you? <laughs> Why do you think that could be? You got the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> this wave looks lost. This wave looks kind of sad, doesn't it? It's because this wave has been separated from its source. The same as that when we become separated from our source, we don't look our best. We don't feel our best. We can feel lost and we can feel alone and we can feel very separate. But see, the thing is, this wave is confused. That's why this wave is looking this way. Because even though we plucked it out of the ocean and put it in a jar, everything that is in the ocean is still in this wave. But because the wave can't feel the power of the ocean around it, it feels like it's lost. It feels like it's separate. And it gets this murky, dull, unempty kind of look to it. So let's... Um, Oh no, you're not ready for you yet. <laughs> I didn't want to do this because I thought I wasn't ready to handle speaking and moving the pictures. <laughs> but here we go. Okay, so with God and with us and us feeling like we're connected to our source, what happens so often is we become disconnected from that feeling. Now, and we get as confused as this wave is, we actually believe we're separate. We don't see ourselves as connected with our source. Maybe we think, oh well, maybe we don't even think we believe anymore. That happens to some people. But it isn't the truth. 
The truth is that we just aren't seeing it right now. So let's look at what are some of the reasons that we get separated from source. And sometimes they are really big, and sometimes they're really mundane. So let's take the big ones first and get them out of the way. Maybe someone had an experience that was really, really frightening, and they get upset. Where was God? Why didn't God keep that from happening? So I'm mad at God. I don't want to talk to God. Maybe we lost someone that we really loved, and it was much too soon. We weren't ready to let them go. And so we're hurt, and we're angry, and we say, God, why didn't you save them? I don't want to talk to you anymore. But the one that really gets me is the one that we do to each other. We as human beings really do harm to each other sometimes. And it's when some of us will say to another one, and particularly young people, there's something wrong with you. You're not good enough. God doesn't like you. God doesn't approve of you. God is totally dissatisfied with you, and you are condemned. The damage that we do to these people is really horrible. And this is the thing that's really sad, is that person never stops and thinks. That's just a human being talking. Because I promise you, if you sit in silence with God, and I know I spent two years doing that, <laughs> and it was wonderful. But if you sit in silence with God, if you listen for that still, small voice to speak to you, God is never going to say anything ugly like that. Never. God is love. And God does love us and roots for us and wants the best for us in everything that we say and everything we do. And the problem here is that so often, Man, and I don't mean that in a gender sex sense. I'm talking just about humans. We, we try to create a God in the image of ourself. And we bring God down to our worst qualities that makes us feel better, I think. We get judgmental. We want this judgmental God, this vengeful God, this hateful God. And so we try to create that, and we try to convince other people that this is the image of God, rather than us to try to rise up to the finest qualities of God, try to become a more loving person, try to become a kinder person, a more compassionate person. It is our job to slowly but surely in this life, not that we're going to reach it, but we should be striving toward that space. Now, those are the big ones. Let's go back to the little, more mundane ones. And that's usually, we get kind of full sometimes, don't we, with our own sense of self-importance. I'm really busy today. I got so many things to do. I have a lot of people, places to go, people to see. I've got no time to pray today. I'll do it tomorrow. And by itself, there's not a thing wrong with that. It's okay. But what happens, it becomes... It's easy to become a habit. It's easy to just, well, I'm busy again today. I'll put it off. And pretty soon you kind of wake up and you might feel that you're in a little bit of a fog and you're not really sure what's wrong. But you're feeling some kind of emptiness inside. Maybe you're getting caught in a shroud of worry and frustration. Your ego is talking to you. What could be wrong? What could be wrong? Maybe you should worry. And you're not listening to the peace that comes from that communication with God. So we know these are the things that happen. They do happen. And this is the things that can detract us from our source and change our life. And it's not for the better. So what can we do? You know, one of the things that we definitely need to not do is to judge. And if Matthew 7, 5 says, hypocrite, pull the plank from your eye before you take the speck from your brothers. Okay, and I just thought we'd have a little humor there with my old guy. I thought he was kind of cute. 
but there are things that we can do. It's not all about what's wrong and what's not, what, what, what mistakes we're making. There are lots of great things that we can do. So let's take a look at that. We can spend time with spirit every day. And what I'm going to suggest, and let me tell you something. When I put these suggestions up there, understand I know they're suggestions. They're things that I like. That doesn't mean they're all right for you. God is very personal. And God will tell you what he needs from you if you ask. But these are things that can work. So I'm going to share them. If it works for you, please take it. If it doesn't work for you, please leave it behind. Because it's not meant to. But... In spending time with spirit every day, what I suggest is you try to have a personal spiritual ritual. Because rituals are things that we tend to not, for, to not forget and not to push aside. How many of you drink coffee every day? <coughs> I bet you never forget that ritual, do you? You always get that cup of coffee. So what I'm suggesting is it doesn't matter. Is it 10 minutes? Is it 15? It's not the amount of the time that really makes the difference. It's the quality. So take 10 or 15 minutes a day and commit to yourself these 10 or 15 minutes out of this whole day that has been given to me, I'm going to give that to my relationship with my eternal Christ. And I'm going to spend time talking and or listening during those 10 minutes. So that's my number one suggestion. Number two is gratitude. Let's try remembering, and when I talk gratitude, this is true, abundance will not create gratitude, but gratitude will create abundance. But that's not what I'm really even talking about. I'm talking about that all day gratitude. I woke up this morning, I'm 69, I'm grateful, thank you very much. But also, if the bird is chirping outside my window, it makes me feel at peace, so thank you very much. If I'm going to meet a friend for lunch, and the traffic is crazy, and somebody lets me in, thank you very much. If I go to meet my friend, the parking lot is full, and as I'm going up and down, right there at the front, someone pulls out and leaves the spot for me. Thank you very much. When I meet my friend, she tells me that something is nice about me today. I look good, whatever, but thank you very much. All day, we all have all these little mini miracles. They come into our life all day long. Do our best to be conscious of them and do our best to actually say, thank you very much. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. For to this you were called as members of one body. We all know what that means, right? <coughs> we're one. And I think it's exciting. That ocean is in the way. God is in us, I am in you, and you are in everyone. Because that is oneness. We are all one. And when you look at someone next to you and you realize you're looking at God, when you look at someone next to you and you realize you're looking at yourself, it's a whole lot easier to do unto others. It really is. <coughs> so be a warrior of peace not a warrior of war. Be a champion for peace. Generosity. I gotta be careful because I talk a lot, so I'm gonna move right along here. Um, be generous. When you're generous to the poor, you're lending <coughs> to God, and you are rewarded. And I would go a step further to say that every blessing I have has been given to me. I have much more than I have urge of my own accord. And sometimes God puts someone in my path and he pulls on my heart and I just feel like I'm supposed to do something. And I'm learning not to ignore it. It's my time to, get, let, to allow God to work through me to help those that need my help or need God's help. Now how about this young lady? Isn't she beautiful? That's my granddaughter. <laughs> and she is, she does think with her heart. And she does speak compassionately and she does act with love. That's why I used it. 
And we all know the value of our thoughts, our words, and our actions. I know we do, because that's part of unity. You know how valuable and you know how powerful they are. So please, the brain is already cluttered. The ego is chattering all over it. Bring your thoughts to your heart. Let your, let your thoughts come from your heart so they put the compassion in your words when they come from your mind. That's what I think. Okay, when we do this, then we are a reflection of the God that we claim to love. And we behave like a reflection. Now, I've got another plan here, and I've got to go really fast. Number one, these are things that uh, Pope Francis, and I love him, he said in reference to Lent. So if you have one, I'm going to keep track of your numbers. Number one. I choose to fast from speaking words that hurt. Speak I, loud. I choose to fast from speaking words that hurt. Number two. I choose to fast from thoughts of what I lack. I speak words of gratitude instead. Excellent. Number three. I choose to fast from frustration and resentment. I practice Patience and forgiveness instead. Perfect. Number four. I choose to fast from pessimism and listen to my heart and express hope instead. Excellent. Number five. I choose to fast from worry. I trust in the Creator, God, infinite love instead. Perfect. Number six. I choose to fast from complaining. <laughs> I seek and appreciate. Instead. Number seven. I choose to fast from pressures. I become prayerful instead. Thank you, Don. Number eight. I choose to fast from selfishness. I demonstrate compassion for others instead. Thank you, Don. Number nine. My personal favorite here. Oh. I choose to fast from needing to be right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I demonstrate love instead. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> I choose to fast from speaking words. I sit in silence so I can hear that still small voice instead. So, this, I'm going to change, you, you can't change somebody's quote because it's their quote, but I'm going to for a moment. I believe that individually we are but a wave, but together we are the ocean. God bless each and every one of you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Reverend Mari. I, I love um, to be able to make a list of something after, after a message like that. I love to be able to write down the different